Dr. Emily Landau. She's the head of the Arms Control and Regional Security Program at the INSS. Emily, great to have you. Hi, good evening. Let's just start with capabilities for a moment, one piece at a time. So North Korea, we've heard those threats since the sanctions passed over the weekend that we will respond a thousandfold. We're used to hearing a lot of bluster from North Korea. What is within, though, the realistic scope of how it might retaliate, what it can do? Well, North Korea can already strike its neighbors with, uh, first of all, with conventional capabilities. Um, for Seoul, it's basically an issue of their conventional capabilities, the thousands of missiles that are targeting that city. Um, but it also has nuclear capabilities within that range. As far as the United States, of course, the two ICBM missile tests were indication that either they've reached the point where they can hit the United States with a nuclear warhead, or they're very close to being able to do so. There was some question uh, with regard to the second test, whether the, uh, the tip of the missile didn't explode as it was re-entering from the atmosphere uh, to Earth. And if there was really a problem, then it would mean maybe, experts say, maybe another six months. But they're going to get there. I mean, it's clear North Korea is on the path. They're slowly but uh, surely developing their nuclear weapons capability and the delivery mechanism to deliver it to their neighbors and to the U.S., which is its main target in terms of its rhetoric. Is diplomacy a relevant option? You follow very closely the arms development program, both in Iran in the past, North Korea now. Is yeah. diplomacy realistic in the first place? Well, I think with regard to North Korea, we can say that it's been a failure of diplomacy. I mean, negotiations have been on again, off again for 25 years. They have not stopped North Korea. There have been deals that have been concluded and breached. Um, and, you know, all the ideas that are being bounced around right now among experts in the U.S. administration, there's nothing there that hasn't been raised before, hasn't been tried before in one way or another, and failed. Um, North Korea and Iran, by the way, these are determined nuclear proliferators. It's very difficult to stop them. And what we're learning from the North Korean case is that diplomacy is not necessarily the route. And I think there's important implications here. Here for the Iranian case as well. Emily, while Russia and China say we're on board with sanctions, could Iran be the way out? Look, I think uh, there are da there's dangerous potential here for uh, very problematic cooperation between North Korea and Iran in the non-conventional realm and in the nuclear realm. They have cooperated before. Uh, in the missile realm, it's documented. I mean, there's been lots of cooperation. There's been some cooperation even in the nuclear realm. And these are the kinds of visits that can actually be abused for discussing these issues. I'm not sure that there's anyone that is watching this situation closely. I have a feeling that during the Obama administration, they were not you know, watching it closely. Now in the Trump administration, perhaps they're looking at it. We have yet to see the Iran policy review, the results of that. Perhaps this will be part of it. We know Pompeo has set up a special division that's supposed to be looking more closely at Iran. Perhaps they're looking at that aspect as well. But I mean, it makes tremendous strategic sense for Iran to be cooperating now with North Korea in the nuclear realm because the spotlight is on Iran. If they can move things, you know, to North Korea, um, that would be a big plus for Iran. So it's dangerous cooperation. And a bolstered common enemy in the Trump yes. era. Dr. Emily Landau, thanks very much for being here. Thank you.